interest in Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, has asked the upper house of parliament for permission to use armed forces in Ukraine until the situation there is stabilized. This follows an appeal by authorities in Ukraine's Crimea for Russia's help in stabilizing the situation in the region. The Russian parliament and the foreign minister earlier expressed concern over the situation in Crimea and asked the president to take measures to protect the citizens of the autonomous republic. And uh, Artis Irina Galushko has been following the reaction Moscow to the events in Crimea. Let's go live to her right now. Um, hi there, Irina. So did we get any idea what Russian MPs want to see happen next? Irina, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, now we know that uh, President Putin has uh, turned to the upper house of the Russian parliament with asking them for the permission to allow troops, Russian troops on the ground in Ukraine before until the situation there normalizes. Now this comes after both houses of the Russian parliament have turned to the president asking him to uh, take measures in order to stabilize the situation, particularly in Crimea, in order to protect the population, including uh, the Russian-speaking population, from any further violence or upheaval in, uh, in that region. So we're watching that very closely right now. Um, at this point, we have no idea about what number of troops we could possibly be even talking about. Uh, but of course, I'm, I'm imagining we will be getting all the information pretty soon. Irina, yesterday you were in Rostov-on-Don. You were listening to uh, the ousted president's uh, speech there. Uh, what exactly did he have to say? Please, could you remind us? Well, yes, of course. Uh, one of the most, uh, you can say one of the main ideas that uh, the ousted president Yanukovych has to say was the fact that he does not recognize the legitimacy of those who call themselves the government of Ukraine at the moment. He insisted he still is uh, the president of Ukraine and uh, uh, logically and ju judicially that is absolutely correct because he hasn't been impeached nor has he resigned and he's still very much alive. So technically he is the elected president of Ukraine. He talked about the reasons why he had to leave Ukraine. He said it was after attempts on his life and uh, after threats that he had him and his family have received in including uh, threats to the life of his youngest grandson. Uh, he's also talked about the fact that he does not uh, in any way believe that Ukraine possibly could be divided. That is one of the things that he has underlined on numerous occasions. He also took a chance to apologize uh, to the police, the Berkut, the Golden Eagles, who have been in standoff for months in, uh, in the central Kiev on the square with uh, the protesters and who have carried heavy losses. He said that he has seen them and he has expressed his condolences already, but he wanted to do it uh, once again. And uh, he also said that he's determined to fight for Ukraine's future and to see that Ukraine stays undivided, stays the way it is uh, right now. Uh, he's also actually mentioned the fact that he is hoping that uh, President Putin will somehow take measures in order to stabilize the situation in Ukraine. He actually said uh, that he was surprised that the Russian president hasn't done or said anything already in that regard, uh, knowing uh, his character. So those are just some of the things that uh, he said. But also Yanukovych, you can say, wrapped up the entire uh, conference with uh, the fact saying that he does not believe the people of Ukraine will follow uh, the current self-proclaimed government um, in the country right now. And uh, earlier also, Irina, we were witnessing what was happening uh, at an urgent session of the Russian parliament, the State Duma, uh, which was discussing the provision of aid to the Crimean autonomy. Could you tell us more about that as well? Please remind us. Absolutely. Well, one of the one of the most important aspects in this entire situation with Ukraine is the fact that there is a lot of Russian nationals and, of course, people who consider themselves to be ethnically Russian who live in the East and particularly in Crimea. And it's their fate, their safety and security is of primary concern for the Russian legislators at this particular moment. That is why they have turned with official address to the Russian president asking him to get involved in order to stabilize the situation, in order to protect these very people who who are essentially uh, Russian from any aggression from uh, the radical groups that are operating in Ukraine. And it is considerably, uh, it is becoming considerably uh, more and more unsafe for them there, you can say. Um, 
At some points, I actually felt like I was uncomfortable speaking Russian when I was in Kiev. And that, for a lot of people uh, in Russia and in eastern Ukraine, is absurd. The Russophobia is on the rise, especially particularly because of uh, the um, radicals who are operating, who seem to be streaming in from western Ukraine, and of course, uh, a lot of whom have actually permeated the branches of the government. And that is also one of the statements that was made by representatives of the Federal Council earlier uh, today. Oh, she's Irina Galushka, live there. Irina, thank you very much indeed. We appreciate it.